and welcome to another Film in 5, where we review movies old and new to give you our thoughts on the films we've been watching here at More Movies. My name is David Roberts, and in this episode, to celebrate November, I'm going to be talking about Touch of Evil, the 1958 classic film noir directed by Orson Welles. And just a warning, if you still haven't seen this classic movie, I'll be talking about the plot and other details, so consider this a spoiler alert. Touch of Evil is set in a gritty small town on the US-Mexico border. It stars Charlton Heston as Miguel Vargas, a Mexican special prosecutor, Janet Lee as Susan, his American wife, and Orson Welles as Captain Hank Quinlan, a corrupt and overweight police detective who will stop at nothing to achieve his sinister goals. The film explodes onto the screen with a dramatic and suspenseful opening scene in which a car bomb detonates killing two people and setting up a dark and suspenseful investigation led by Captain Quinlan. A recovering alcoholic and a bigot, Quinlan implicates a young Mexican man named Sanchez after finding dynamite in a box in the young man's apartment. Vargas is alarmed due to finding the same box empty in a previous scene. He accuses Quinlan of planting the dynamite. Vargas begins to question the captain's previous convictions suspecting foul play. What unfolds is an intricate mystery filled with paranoia and morally ambiguous characters. This is about as good as it gets when it comes to cinematic pulp detective stories. The film is based on Whit Masterson's Badge of Evil, published in 1956. It was brought to the attention of Charlton Heston first, who worked with Universal on bringing the book to the screen, and Heston suggested Orson Welles as the director. Wells worked closely with cinematographer Russell Metty in production to create what would now be considered a blueprint of film noir. The pair took massive inspiration from all the great noir classics that had come before, from Double Indemnity and The Big Sleep, to Out of the Past and The Third Man, which starred Wells as Harry Lyme. Touch of Evil's oil black frames are cut by stark shards of light, illuminating only what is intended for us to see. The stark chiaroscuro lighting, expressionistic visuals, low angled shots and Venetian blind effects are all present. However, these traits are paired with Wells' busy mise-en-scene and deep focus cinematography to great effect. With long takes and sweeping camera movements, that evoke memories of the director's iconic Citizen Kane. The attention to detail creates a complete visual feast that is extraordinary to witness. The captivating open sequence, lasting over three minutes, all as one long take, is held in high regard by many due to these unique stylings. It is fraught with tension and peril, packed with visual signifiers that convey a story that only the audience is wise to. This is a classic Hitchcock bomb technique, that gives the viewers information that the characters are oblivious to, creating a powerful and palpable suspense. The film went through numerous editors, starting in collaboration with Wells himself, before he was locked out of the edit suite. This convoluted process turned the movie into a bit of a mess. Studio interference and various reshoots, intended to make the film more conventional, ended with a very dissatisfied Orson Welles who penned a 58-page memo detailing changes that should be made to knock the movie back into shape and in line with his original vision, but sadly this never came to pass. The original version of the film released in cinemas was a commercial failure, with Universal dropping the movie and Wells almost immediately. Later re-evaluations of the film, however, praised the technical brilliance of the film, performances from the cast and the intriguing plot, but these were all thanks to newer releases. In 1998, a so-called director's cut was produced using Wells' original memo. Touch of Evil is a tale about ethics and morality. It contrasts our two protagonists in a fight between good and evil. But also, like all great noirs, it's a window into the darkest reaches of Western culture. The paranoia present in Touch of Evil feels very of the time. It seems fitting that in one of the earliest great film noirs, The Maltese Falcon, the movie ends with the hopeful line, The... Uh... Stuff that dreams are made of. Huh? A commentary on the American dream being alive and well, and the optimistic end of World War II around the corner. By the end of Touch of Evil, there is no hope, just tragedy and despair. A reflection on the triviality of life and a lost sense of morality. And this is where America and the West was heading, a dark place that it fought for many years to overcome. He was some kind of a man. What does it matter what you say about people? 
That's it for this review. What did you think of Touch of Evil? Let us know in the comments down below. Till next time, take care of yourself and keep watching more movies. That's it for this video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And remember to like, share and subscribe right here on YouTube. For more film reviews and articles, check out our website, moremovies.co.uk. And join us on social media, at More Movies For You. That's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all across the board, you know the score. If you enjoy what we do, please consider supporting us at buymeacoffee.com or join us on one of our packages on Patreon. The links are in the description down below. And for more filmtastic content, click one of the buttons on screen now.